Charlie Montotuyella with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, our website, bluebearflutes.com, as well as uh, here on YouTube, our Instagram, Facebook, and yada, yada, yada. I do highly recommend checking out our Instagram, though. If you have uh, watched other videos that I've offered in the past, especially recent other videos, we actually have some things going on that are kind of like a video that points to an Instagram uh, posting, so you might want to check some of that stuff out. Our Instagram, Blue Bear Flutes, like I say, you'll find us. Anyway, I've been making and playing the Native American flute for about 30, going on my 34th year now, 33 years and some time. And uh, I've tried over the years to teach so many, so many people how to play the flute. And I think with pretty good success, I've got some techniques that help build, you know, communications and, and also some techniques to help get people really just to break the ice, I think. And, and really that's all there is. This has to be the easiest instrument in the entire world to play, uh, the Native American flute is. And when I say Native American flute, that could represent a number of things. This is a six hole Native American flute, and then I've got a five hole version of the same flute right here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five holes that you play with. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, you'll note that uh, my six hole flute, when I play it in a moment, you'll notice that you don't keep that fingering covered up all the time to play the scale properly, as you do with most modern and many other flute makers, six hole Native American flutes. I've always asked people, why would you make a flute that you have to keep that hole covered? And I know why it happens. I mean, I've been making them for a while. We've made, oh my gosh, a lot of flutes, but uh, um, having made them all this time, I know why that happens. And I have videos about that. So please make sure if you've ever wondered why you have a piece of leather tie around your six hole flute there, of course it wasn't one of mine, uh, but uh, you have something covering that hole or you have to keep your finger on it to make it play the minor pentatonic scale properly. We've got videos about that you really ought to look into. So anyway, the Native American flute or the Native American flute, as I have to put my little quotations around, could be a number of things. It could be uh, ocarina made out of clay. It could be a kina. Um, I've actually got a hybrid kina type flute right here, which is a really special one. <laughs> really neat big mouthpiece not something that you see really with any flutes I think in general but this one is just a, a real special one it's got kind of a story behind it and what have you um, but it's a hybrid kina type flute and with that in mind uh, the kina is no less similar to that except for they're usually a little bit smaller and they're um, six holes just like that usually with an extra thumb hole in the back that one does not have Originally, I don't believe they had thumb holes in the back, not, not historically accurate ones. Um, but the modern ones that everybody plays today have an extra hole in the back. They're also all in major keys. And when I say in a major major scale or a major key, like this is a maple fife here, and you'll forgive me, when I play a large embouchure open mouthpiece like I just did, or like my silver flute I'll show you in a second, I get used to that really wide smile that I have to make to make it play. And focusing on this tiny flute, you'll notice you notice that this tiny flute sounds kind of airy. And it's because I've been playing a larger mouthpiece flute. And with that in mind, um, this one actually, of course, I didn't make this maple fife. I, I bought it forever ago. Um, I'm not the one that drilled the hole in this thing either because I know some things to do that will make it play really as sweet as uh, some Dubliner cheese. <laughs> I really love Dubliner cheese. Anyway, um, it'll make it uh, play really mellow and beautiful without a lot of extra effort on my part. So uh, I just wanted to give you an example. This is a six hole flute that isn't a major scale. It's in a major key. And with that in mind, um, the key doesn't make it really beautiful sounding necessarily. Uh, the scale doesn't make it beautiful sounding. The fact that it's side blown like this doesn't necessarily make it beautiful sounding. It makes it a little bit more challenging for a lot of people because it's got this uh, thing that you have to learn how to direct your air just right. It takes some practice to do that. The better you get at it, of course, people like your sounds a lot better. But um, with this kind of flute, like I say, a lot of the tonal quality, other than that one little making, I wouldn't call it an error, but level of expertise that I have today, and making these types of flutes, which I do make for my own self and for a few friends, uh, side-blown flutes. It's rare, so please don't ask me to do it, but, but uh, on occasion when I've made them, 
Um, I've gotten kind of good at it and it doesn't really make a, uh, an airy sound so much, even if it has a small mouthpiece like that. Now, here is a silver flute. Everybody has seen one of these for the most part. Few people probably, or rather fewer people probably have played them. Uh, those of you silver flute players out there, uh, in, for the rest of you, this is called a transverse flute, meaning it plays like this. Um, and it's also a, a side-blown flute is something you can call it. The first one I showed you, the big one, is a rim-blown or edge-blown flute. All this is really immaterial, because uh, what we're going to be talking about is this little guy right here today. But just to show you the tonal quality of something that you have to direct your air into like that. Let's see. So you can, you can change... You can change the tonal quality by focusing the air more articulately, if that's even a word. Anyway, you can change the tonal quality of this guy. That flute has gobs of keys, buttons that do this and buttons that do that, and so much to make it so much more complicated than it really has to be. But it is a very handy tool. You can play about three octaves on it, and it's certainly excellent for playing in an orchestra or playing along with other, you know, lengthy range instruments. Now, the Native American flute that most of you are familiar with, this type of flute, which is, a, it has a mouthpiece. It's not even a blown flute, it's a mouthpiece. You actually put your, you can call it an end blown flute, but it's not in the respect of how you make your mouth, your embouchure, which is what this is called when you're trying to make a flute play, how you make your embouchure do to play those other kind of flutes, um, this thing you don't have to do it. It's all built in. It's all like made into this thing right here, which I'm going to show you about in just a moment. Now you notice it's in a different key, in a different scale than the other. So not only is it a lower tone, which is the key that it's in, um, but it's also a five-hole flute. Yeah, but it's a minor pentatonic uh, flute. I can play both the maple flute and the silver flute that I showed you. I can play both of those in minor keys. Uh, the maple flute, it'll play in basically two or two and a half octaves of the major key that it's made in, that it's created in, this particular key. And then I can also play its relative minor key, which will only have one relative minor key, and I can probably play in about an octave and a half of that. This flute is made in a minor key, which is what you hear, it's kind of like typical Native American flute music. It's made in a minor key and I can play it in its relative major key. So I can, you know, you can kind of cross things back and forth a little bit, but what you're looking for as a Native American flute listener, player, or what have you, admirer, I don't know what else there is, um, you're looking for is something that is in the minor pentatonic key. And pentatonic means five, so you got like five basic notes. That's, that's five notes. One, two, three, four, and then all covered is the fifth note. So, um, and all of you are thinking, well, it's missing something. That's the octave of the bottom note. So you have... So that's five notes. The six notes actually a copy of the last notes, just higher. And then, you know, from there you can play just a little bit more. Most Native American flutes will only play about an octave and a half, give or take, um, in their minor key that they're usually made in, although I've seen some that were made in major keys per people requesting this, that, and the other. Um, anyway, um, they play about an octave and, and a half, which is apparently enough because we all enjoy this music so much. Um, but what I want to show you is how this all functions. I've got so many videos on making and perfecting a flute and making this area in, underneath of this block here perfect that, uh, you know, I... I really feel like sometimes I'm beating a dead horse, but then I get a question, or I get a question here, or one on YouTube, or on my email box, or someone just doesn't seem to get it. So that's why we're here today. I'm going to show you what it takes to make it play. This is a PVC version of pretty much that same. And you hear it's a little airy sounding, but I can kind of fix that. Let me see. Some little adjustments that I've learned to tweak on this thing. And this is a break apart flute too that I have in another video. So if you're wondering why it looks like this, like like it's something off of uh, the old 1980s Mario Brothers movie, <laughs> this is uh, really something that you can take apart and stick in your backpack. It's it's the reason we made this flute like it is, 
And even though it is really, you know, thin PVC, um, it has a purpose because I can fold it up and, and literally I can stick this in my back pocket on any pants I'm wearing. So it's very handy for what, it, what it's made for. I'm going to show you in just a second, um, using it as a tool, what the uh, sound hole area sounds like. Now, I promised to play these two for you. This six hole flute is an old style flute. It's a copy of a copy of a copy. It has a tiny inside diameter. This flute is pretty much by accident in the key of A minor, pentatonic. This is a Western Cedar flute, five holes, and it is also in the key of A minor pentatonic on purpose. So I'm gonna play it for you. Finger's been playing on big flutes for a minute. Uh, and then here's the six hole flute, which has fingerings in a different you know, configuration. In addition, it has one extra hole. So let's see what we're doing here. So that's how the six hole flute really, you know, back in the old days, that's how they would play. Um, but um, with the modern advent of people wanting something larger in diameter, they make it larger and it kind of throws the placement of these holes off. They kind of drift apart, which you can actually see in that little fife. There's a spacing in between there and a large six hole flute made to mock the sound or mimic the sound of this one um, actually has quite a spacing in between these top three and the bottom three for a reason. Uh, but this guy So it is a really neat instrument, but not too dissimilar from the five hole version. This one has a little bit wider sound hole, and I'm gonna show you in just a second what that does, but the wider sound hole does affect the tone just a little bit, and you hear just a little airy sound. I grabbed this one off my shelf uh, this is one of my own personal flutes. Hadn't played it in probably a year or so. No doubt it could use some oiling and what have you. It looks like it's lacquered. It's probably a little shiny to you. It's not been lacquered. It's just natural oil and wax finish. And uh, with the lower tone flutes, that's what a lot of you say that you really enjoy hearing those low tone flutes. I could probably put any of you to sleep with those first uh, two that I played there, uh, Native American type flutes. But this one, or back to what I played, So um, there are a few things you can do different with lower tone flutes than you can with higher tone flutes. You notice I play it a little bit slower. I typically do that just out of habit. Um, higher tone flutes transition notes quicker than low tone flutes do. So if I played my like really mega low flute over there, um, it would be really slow that I try to play it so that the note transitions have time to actually seat so that they can find their place before I go to the next note. And that's really important. So. What makes a good sounding Native American flute? That's why we're here today. I'm gonna to show you, it's all about this area right here. That area is so, so critical, and uh, if it's not made properly, it won't sound good. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. I had a question today via email. One of my um, viewers on YouTube asked me about a piece of brass that they are missing on their flute. Now, many of you, may know this, but uh, Native Americans didn't originally put brass, you know, prior to coming in contact with Europeans under their block of their flutes. And it pretty much looked like that. I, I think the manufacturer of said piece of brass might round the edges so it's not so sharp there. But, but for the most part, this, it's got like a track in the middle of it here. And it goes on top of a flute right here, right under this block. And... Um, its its basic purpose is to direct the airflow. I'm going to show you, if you're a flute maker, how you can make your flute sound at least as good as, as theirs, usually more better, in my opinion, than uh, these guys' flutes. They use that piece of brass um, under their block. Now the block, just to give you an idea, is this little piece of wood sitting on top. It's tied down on this flute with a piece of uh, cord that I made another video about. Um, but, uh, but this block is the piece I'm talking about. This flute, just like this PVC one, which is so much easier because it's not tied down, 
as a track built into the flute. That's the way that I make these type of flutes. I have a lot of people ask me, you know, I, I lost this piece of brass. What can I do to make my flute play? And usually I tell them, well, if you'll send me your flute, I'll put a track in the block or in the flute if you'd like. Now, the benefit of putting the, the track in the brass, start with that, is right here along these edges, it's incredibly square and sharp, much more so than my picture there. But uh, anyway, that's incredibly square and sharp inside. And when I say sharp, I just mean they're very articulate. They're very defined is probably the better thing to say. Um, in PVC, using a power tool of sort, you can make a very defined track, but you notice that the tone may not be as good as, say, my wooden flute. And there's reasons for that. Um, but how defined this track area here is really what determines like 89% of the tone quality. That, the size and shape of the sound hole in respect to the size of the diameter on the inside of this flute. I've got videos about most of this stuff. Like I say, I feel like sometimes I'm beating a dead horse, but I just want to make sure you know that you don't have to have that piece of brass there to make your flute play well. If your flute came with that and you're not a flute maker or at least a woodworker, you might want to keep it there. You know, it's got its purpose. But with, with my flutes having the track inside of the flute itself, the block that sits on top of it here can wiggle around and go all kinds of directions and still play great. You don't have to have that piece of cyborg material over there to make it play properly. Because even if your flute wobbles, you know, the little block turns one way or the other, it'll still play. Whereas with this one, you have to make sure that that piece of brass is turned exactly right. And then on top of it, you've got to make sure that your block, this little piece that's tied down on this flute, just as it is on my other one, you have to make sure that that block is perfectly straight as well. Otherwise, you'll have an air leak and it won't play good. But how good it plays is just so phenomenal whenever they're all lined up right. Well, I've learned that beginners aren't really good at lining stuff up right. And honestly, you know, looking back through history, Historically made Native American flutes that date back more than 500 years show not that we had brass, <laughs> we never used brass, but that we made the tracks into the block, we made them into flute, and sometimes we made flutes without tracks, which is kind of interesting in itself. But, uh, but getting back to my point, the thing that is going to make a really good sound quality for you, if you notice I've got a little square hole right here, it doesn't have to be square, it could be round. Square holes make a better tone, sorry. Um, but that square hole, how defined it is, this edge underneath of the block here, it needs to be very a very gradual, or as I call it, a sharp um, edge right there. That's very important, making the, the path under there sharp. I've got videos like the Secret to Native American Flute Making to tell you that. Um, but uh, anyway, when you make a flute, and let's say, you know, I guess we can uh, we can pretend this is your flute here. Just draw, just draw on the board. You've got this flute here, and then say this is your mouthpiece right here, and this is the bottom of the flute, and then here's a couple of holes. You know, not really a big deal. The most important part of the flute is going to be this track area, and this track focuses the air and makes it go straight across the knife edge. And the straighter and with less <laughs> zigzags as I draw, I'm not really that kind of artist, um, you know, the straighter you keep it, which I mean, I can carve this stuff out with my eyes closed. Drawing is a whole nother, especially turning sideways and not getting in front of you and not using a ruler, you know. But, um, but anyway, um, the straighter you keep that track going down, you know, the flute uh, from point A being the air supply hole up here, which is an opening when I blow, air comes out of this hole up here in the top and then it goes across the, the channel, and then as soon as it comes out of the channel, it directs directly across that track. That's what makes that beautiful Native American flute tone. It's not something you know that you have to learn how to do. And once this track comes out right here, and we hit that sound hole, you want it to hit that sound hole abruptly, which I'm going to draw a hollow hole right here for the sound hole. Not a really good picture at all. Once it comes out and hits this edge, the air is going to hit this edge right here of the sound hole. How it hits that sound hole is what's going to determine the quality of it. So I've got videos, once again, lots of videos about this. If you kind of bevel it down a little bit and bevel it up a little bit, 
uh, down on the, the inside of the flute and then up on the block itself, you'll find that it really makes a good, you know, good tone. Also, you want the track to be relatively um, straight across. With a little dip, you know, you want it to kind of dip back down into here, just a pinch, not really, I mean, you can do that with like a jeweler's file, but, um, but how that happens is so incredibly important, and that's what makes the flute sound really the way it does, other than the fact that it's minor pentatonic. All those Cowboys and Indians movies that you watched from back in the old black and white picture days, those were all played on a silver flute for the most part. I mean, there may be other instances, but I've known the people that did this, uh, so I've, I've got the opportunity to meet some really interesting people in my life, and most of the Cowboy and Indian music was played on a silver flute. Some of it was in major, some of it was in minor, and some of it was kind of a mix between the two. Um, and that sound that you're hearing there is coming from a silver transverse flute. However, of course, most, you know, once again, so many of the albums, the videos, the public performances you hear of the Native American flute, they're all played on a flute just like this. Even if it has a sixth hole right here, most of the time you keep it covered up. If it's one of those other type of six hole flutes, you're keeping that hole covered up. So basically it's a five hole flute anyway. Um, and this one, of course, they can all play the same amount of notes. They don't even get bent out of shape on that. But, but uh, you know, it's basically this is what you're hearing, you know. Somebody that tells you that it sounds like this or sounds like that, you have to think of where they're coming from. Are they trying to sell you something? I personally, right now, you may go to my website and buy something. I'm not, you know, I'm not directing you there. You can go there if you like, but, but I'm just wanting to show you the tone of this instrument is unique because of the way it's made and how it's made and its similarity to the originals. That's what's so important. That's what makes it a Native American flute. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you all out. Hope you've enjoyed it, got something good out of it, and uh, I hope to see you here on YouTube again very soon. So once again, happy flute playing, happy flute making. Be careful, okay? <laughs> Please be careful. Make sure you wear your goggles over your eyes. Wear a mask if you need a mask for whatever reason. And then uh, gloves and protection. And, you know, if you don't know how to use tools, there's a learning curve to everything. Make sure that you don't cut your finger off in the process. So, talk to you again very soon.